I'm a native New Yorker. I'm a Bronx girl. And if you know anything about New York, it's a cultural melting pot where we respected everyone's culture. Racism doesn't exist in my vocabulary. When I joined the military, I knew that I was gonna have certain experiences, but how I was treated as a Hispanic woman, it was almost like I was less than. When I joined the military in the 90s, it was a more Caucasian dominant, what we call slutty old dogs. Middle-aged white Caucasian men or white Caucasian women that had a point to prove that they measure up to their counterpart. So here I am, this boisterous, vivacious Puerto Rican girl from the Bronx. And man, I was the biggest target ever because my tone of voice was wrong. How I spoke was wrong. It was racially charged. When I decided to join the Navy, I had such pride and honor. I was gonna be a lifer, I was gonna do 20 years. I think I did four years, 10 months, and some change. I was sexually assaulted twice, so I have PTSD from that. My first sexual assault happened when I was in Illinois, in Great Lakes. Yes, it was racially charged. When I think of the assailants. There was so many emotions. I just did not know how to deal with them. I felt such shame. And when I came home, it was like I had failed. I felt lost. I was pretty much drinking a fifth of vodka a day, tossing it back like water. I mean, in my culture, we don't disrespect our parents. And the first time I had that outburst where I said the most nastiest things to my mother, I knew then there was something really wrong because they didn't deserve that. My younger sister was maybe about 10 or 12 years old. And I understand why my mother said, okay, no. Pack your stuff and you gotta get out. Because if I'ma lose you three sheets to the wind, I can't lose her as well. Once I found that out, I was pregnant, I stopped drinking. Well, I was like, okay, I gotta get my shit together. I had my daughter, but then once I went back to work and the stress of working, I went right back to the bottle. My mom looked at me and she said, okay, Marlene, enough. We, we gotta get you in. So with EMDR, I was able to process a lot of the trauma and we actually got to the heart of where my bitterness and anger came from. And once we went through that process, oh my God, it, it was almost like, here's the trauma, here's an envelope, put it in the envelope. We sealed it. It's done. The traumas happened. You can never forget it, but the emotions attached to it is what we deal with. So EMDR helps you, I don't want to say detach, but kind of process those emotions, understand what that is, and then put it to bed. Not only was I able to live again, I was able to go back to school, get my degree. I'm engaged to be married now. I have found my new normal. I've been able to come back to who I am. And these experiences that I've had has made me the woman I am today.